What's up everybody? This is my 7.3 van. This is my E350 7.3 van that has been sitting for entirely too long because I love this van and I could not figure out what happened. So it was getting oil into the fuel system which is an indicator of bad injector o-rings. So I replaced the injector o-rings and drove it and it was great. Drove better than it ever has. And then it just died halfway back. I limped it home and then it would not run for more than uh, like three minutes at a time. And then it would just would not run anymore. Let it sit for a day, crank it back up, run for three minutes. Nope. So I did a bunch of digging, did all kinds of stuff. And it's the freaking injector o-rings that I bought. Apparently I got some cheap ones that cracked because I didn't get OEM ones. So now I have actual really expensive o-rings that are supposed to be good and were highly rated and everything. So now I'm going to put them in. I'm going to take all the injectors back out, which is really annoying on a van. If you can see, there they are, and it's even tighter on the other side. So, ooh, ooh fun. And then we're going to, after that, crank it up and see if it runs good and if so then i have my van back and i'm really excited because i mean i just i got used to having a lot of room in here i mean it's it's getting all mildewy and dewy and everything i'm gonna have to clean everything afterwards oh man it's been sitting for too long all the storms and stuff it's probably gonna rot out the edging this van is actually in really good condition for it to be a 99 ah oh, i love this van we got to save it. We got to get it back. We're going to do it, though. All right. Here is your standard Huey injection injector for a 7.3. This is your injector. It has oil pressure that pressurizes the fuel and then a solenoid on top that gets electri that gets um, electrified and then bam, boom. And those are all the oil rings that were on it and and they're not like exceptionally bad but i'm thinking maybe they just weren't maybe they were too small or something i'm not sure i don't know we'll see we'll see if it runs after i put it on and i got all the new ones and they're even different colors and stuff so here we go all right we got it all installed even the crush washer and i'll tell you what this right here looks like it is sticking out way more than this did this was not even this was sunken into that groove this is pushing out of that groove so I'm thinking that's probably our problem this probably got stuck on or I put it on there and then it just shrunk up so I believe that was our problem so let's get this back up and let's do seven more woo and then put it all back together all right uh, working on the van here and we got some milky injectors which means that probably from that crazy flood that we got um yeah water definitely got in the engine so i'm gonna need to change the oil and probably flush out flush out the oil system so that'll be fun but um if you wonder how 7.3 injectors come out because i don't remember if i've covered that or not uh you have a top bolt and a bottom bolt they're eight eight millimeter so it'll be lodged in there like the other ones so just unplug it with that plug that you see right there and then the the top bolt is still in it because you can actually just take the bottom bolt out and then this collar right here pry on that in a certain way and then pop comes out because this collar pushes up and around that top bolt so all you got to do is take out that bottom eight and of course the little drain tube because there's a hole right here and that is where the oil shoots out you got to make sure and put that back or else oil will just be shooting out everywhere and it'll it, it that focuses it back down instead of just shooting randomly out from experience of putting these injectors in i have it re-o-ringed already and you really want to be careful the way that you put it back in as to not complicate things for yourself. What I have figured out is take the um, top bolt out, put it in, 
and then top bolt, bottom bolt, and then seat it. So like use a rubber hammer or a rubber grommet or something and smack it down into place. You want to make sure you oil this up too. And um, don't forget to evacuate the cylinder. So turn it over and get all that crap out of the cylinder because I guarantee you there's something in there. So once you get it out of the cylinder, then oil this up, slot it, put the top bolt in, put the bottom bolt in, and then seat it, and then take the top bolt, run it down, and then put the uh, little oil gallery thing on. And then after it's completely seated and you, you get it all the way down, then tighten the bottom bolt finally and you're good and don't forget to plug it up of, of course and that's that's the way that i found that works best that you don't end up tripping over yourself and stuff drain plug out and sprayed it with some uh, starting fluid and it's nice and clean it was murky just like the injectors were but no metal on it on the magnet which is a good sign good healthy motor just got to get it all back together and run it after this i'll put that back in Drop her 15 quarts of oil in, and we'll see if she cranks. All right, almost done adding oil. And by the way, this is 15W40 that I got from Costco. It's three gallons for $25. And, you know, you just about can't beat that. Like, anywhere. I know Costco is like a meme and everything, but... Dang, three gallons of 15W40... I mean, it may not be 15W40, it might just be like olive oil or something, but dang, that is not bad. So, yep, just going to finish putting this last jug in, and then we'll see if she'll fire up. It's not exactly enough oil, but it's enough to where she'll fire. It's reading on the dipstick, at least. So, definitely better than that slush that it had in it before. From all those storms all right put that back in there cap back on and given that we got some batteries that actually want to work did i just put oil on my posters Dang it. given that we have some batteries that will work i've had them on charge the whole time uh there's a chance maybe we'll end up cranking it maybe maybe we'll end up my GoPro died on me, so I've been using my phone. All right. I would turn it over, but I don't trust the batteries. So we're going to give it a little bit of go-go juice. Oh, no, it's the starting fluid. Oh, my hand. I can't control myself. Oh, God. It's going in the turbo. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. All right. Hey, look at that. More connection issues. This is why things that sit, it sucks. Now I have ground issues, electrical issues, burning wires. Woohoo! I'll be right back. All right, we're gonna try it one more time before we go get the jump pack. That sounds great. That doesn't sound terrible at all. <laughs> Oh, we need a good set of batteries. <laughs> I just put batteries in it, too. Oh, look. No kidding. Ugh. Holy frick, it did it! Oh, my God! Will it run? Holy frick, it'll run! We have... No oil pressure, somehow. That's probably fine. How is it running with no oil pressure? The oil pressure sender isn't, isn't good, I guess. I What? It's so smoky. I wasn't expecting it to crank, so I didn't do it. Oh my god. Well, that ain't good. We got ourselves a problem. But that's fine, because it's running now. Woo! Let's go. Well, there you have it. She's running. She, I'm pretty sure it blew out the frickin' the oil pressure sensor, but other than that, it's running, and it's dumping oil right now, but, you know, it's purging all that crap out of the, uh, 
the high pressure oil pump reservoir. So it's, it's, it's good, it's fine. It's running, it's doing better than it was before, and it's fixed. So yeah, let's do it. This is Jaeger's garage and we've done it again, boys.